Okay, so here we go with our next little bit of code. Uh, this one's called DNA. Let me give you some background here. So with DNA, we use these four characters, A, G, C, and T, to represent the nucleobases. Uh, basically, a strand of DNA is made up, made up of some combination of these four characters. So a DNA strand could be any combination and it's just those those four in some order. Okay, biology stuff. Now, because there's only four characters, it actually makes it easy we can represent this as binary, right? In theory, this is something that the computer more readily understands instead of characters. Now, um, I'm gonna ask a question and then I kinda want you to pause it and think about it, see if you can figure it out. We have four characters or four states. How many bits, that is binary digits, do we need in order to represent all four? The answer here is going to be two. Okay, what am I saying? Well, let's take these four characters and map them, that is assign them to um, some binary digits. For instance, if I was to take A, I would likely just map it to zero, zero. I'm going to take C, map it to zero, one, G, one, zero, and T, one, one. So this program will operate on the premise that these things are directly correlated, right? This actually goes both ways, right? Okay, those things are mapped, they're interchangeable, and with that, we could basically translate this into binary digits. That is the whole premise of the program. I'm gonna open up IntelliJ. <clears throat> in IntelliJ, we're going to make a new project by going to File, New, Project. My JDK is already selected. We're going to go Next. We'll hit Next again on this screen. And now I need to name my project. Well, right now I'm in a Principles folder. You should be able to go ahead and just start naming, right? Call this DNA. IntelliJ will create the subfolder for you. I'm going to navigate to a different location hopping to my AP Computer Science A. And I still want my project to be called DNA, but I'm going to ensure that a subfolder is created. This is good practice because uh, later on we're gonna have programs with multiple files inside the source code folder. So uh, this will help that stay organized. So I'm gonna make sure we got a subfolder, tell it to finish. It's gonna tell me it's gonna create that DNA subfolder, and I'm gonna say okay. All right, I'm gonna expand my project folder. I'm gonna right click on the SRC. I'm gonna make a new Java class. This one's called DNA. Okay. Let's go ahead and plug in a main method with PSVM. And I'll come back to that. This program really consists of two methods, right? I'm gonna give you some comments and then I'm gonna offer an opportunity to like pause and see if you can come up with the uh, method headers for those two methods. And then we'll actually tackle those two methods. So my first method uh, returns true if DNA only contains A, C, G, or T. Right? It only consists of those things. Uh, we're going to go false otherwise. Okay. A signature for this may look something like DNA. Uh, that's that is this class really that's um, extraneous we don't need to actually denote that because we're already in this class but name of the method is valid we're going to take in some type of string and ultimately we're going to return that and this needs to be static uh, I don't know if I could actually show underline in a comment here this this is static so that's what a signature would look like for this particular method. A second method that we would have is something like returns a binary string representation of DNA assumes that DNA is valid, right? So in theory, our program would put it through this is valid method first before trying to do this. That means um, that when we make this assumption, we know it consists of only 
A, C, G, and T characters, and that actually makes our method easier to code. And so here is the binary translation, right? A C, an A turns into zero, zero, C, zero, one, G, it's gonna be one, zero, and lastly, T is going to translate into one, one. Okay, I'm gonna give you a method signature again in this exact same class. We're gonna call this one to binary. Now both of these are static. I'm going to maybe do something like that. Again, we would normally underline this. So here's a good part to kind of pause. The first thing is write method headers for these two methods. I've outlined the methods using some comments. I've given you method signatures. Give me a method header. Okay, we're going to pick up with this is valid method and a header is going to look like public static boolean that's what we're returning the name of the method is is valid we're going to take in a string which i'm going to refer to as dna and that's it right here is our parameter for the is valid method we ultimately return a boolean this is in the dna class and it is static okay so inside of this, yeah, let's go ahead and translate. Let's go ahead and put a, a method header down here for this one. This one's gonna be public static string. All right, string is our return type to binary. And it's gonna take in a string. That is the original DNA. So there's our two method headers, as well as descriptions on what they do. Here's a, probably another good opportunity to pause and see if you can write these um, on your own. I recommend doing the is valid method first and then doing the two binary. Let's get started on this is valid. So we're going to take in a string. The idea is we want to loop through that string and make sure that each character is only these things. In the event that we find something different, we return false. But if we manage to go through the entire string and never find anything else other than ACGT, then we can return true. So I'm going to create a loop here. Um, so I got some level solutions here, right? Like the, I think the first premise is let's go through, let's check each individual character. All right, I'm going to loop through my DNA string. We'll start i at index zero, as long as i is less than dna.length. Right? DNA is a string. So we're going to call the length method. Note the parentheses. If the current character, right? Well, how do you get the current character? We'll take our string DNA. There's a couple of ways, right? What's in the subset is to use substring. I have taught you char at. So if the char at the current index, current index i, right? This is going to pull out the current character. DNA is a string. We're going to call the char at method. I'm passing in i, which is an integer. So we're going to get the character that is at this particular index from this string. The whole thing I have highlighted now is a single character. I want to ask, is that not equal to an a? Right, And I kind of want to pull out that character and ask, is it not equal to a C? Right away, you should start seeing that if we continue down this, this path, we got maybe some issues. So one, or it's like some, yeah, you know, like some, it's not pretty. So one approach is to, why don't we just pull out the character up here? I'm gonna create a character, which I'm calling CH. And I'm going to save the current character into that. This is uh, not only going to end up being a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier to type out syntax, right? Because instead of pulling out the character here and then checking, is it not equal to an A? I'm going to pull out the current character one time on this current iteration. And then I just refer to that variable. This is more efficient, right? Because each time that you call this method, it's having to execute some code behind the scenes, right? 
I'm saying if the current character is not equal to an A, and the current character is not equal to a C, and the current character does not equal a G, and the current character does not equal a T. Notice that we're comparing a character to a character. I'm using single quotes. If this is true, if the current character is not an A, and it's not a C, and it's not a G, and it's not a T, it must be something else, which means that our DNA string is not valid. I'm going to return false. As you note, that will exit the method completely. Right? We're looping through. The moment I find something other than the four characters that I'm looking for, boom, we're gone. If I manage to go through the entire thing, well, that means it must be nothing but A, C, G, and T because I'm still here. So I'm going to return true in that case. Okay, here is a solution. We're going to test it out. We'll talk about some caveats, and then we'll talk about a different way, a big brain way that you could code this. So I'm back in my main method. I'm going to create a example DNA string. All right, I'm going to create a string DNA is equal to A, C, G, T. We'll start simple. And I want to know, is that DNA strand, that string, valid? Well, I'm going to call the isValid method, passing it in. This is going to tell this method to execute using this particular string, in this case. We're going to test it out. I'm going to tell us to run, oh, it's going to be mad at me down here because I have a method that is supposed to return a string and it's not returning anything. So we're going to put in a dummy return statement right now. True, ACGT is valid. Let's throw a random character in there, X, and see if that's valid. Okay, so I'm looking pretty good so far. I think the your first thought is... Um, are we only looking for capital letters? In theory, capitalization is just not an issue in AP Computer Science A, right? In the FRQs, free response questions, they're never concerned with capitalization. If you were looking for capitalization, one approach is to do the lowercase versions of these, right? So we check on, is the current character not equal to an A? And you would continue on with that pattern. Okay, a slightly bigger brain approach is let's take the string whenever it comes in and just make it capital letters. I am checking for only capital letters, right? So I will take DNA, and here's a method that is outside the subset, but you may know it, and I'm gonna turn it into uppercase. Okay, some of you, you're already upset. You know what I'm about to do. We have ACGT, right? I'm changing my DNA strand to be lowercase letters we call the is valid method passing in these four characters and here the theory is dna goes to all uppercase so at this point it should be acgt so whenever i loop through it we pull out the current character we test that blah 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 however when i actually run it when i actually test it it says this is not valid What's going on here? And you actually see IntelliJ is trying to indicate here, result is ignored. So here's the thing. The string methods, right? None of the string methods actually modify the string itself, right? We're gonna learn terminology a little bit later. This is known as an implicit parameter, but this implicit parameter, it doesn't actually change. What happens inside of this method is a new string gets created where all the characters are uppercase. It's identical, it's a copy, but the stuff's uppercase, and that gets returned without actually modifying this, without actually modifying DNA. So there is a string that's being returned here that is ACGT, but I'm not actually doing anything with it. And so the way that we kind of simulate that change is I'm gonna take the variable and I'm gonna say, okay, stop looking at the string that you were looking at, which was this. Look at this one instead which is an all uppercase version. Now let's try this. True, this one is valid even though it's all 
lowercase letters. If I throw in a random X, that is going to be invalid, right? Because that comes in here and it creates that string and I'm not looking for a capital X. This is pretty good. Okay, um, this is a solution. This is one that I'm happy with. I'm gonna show you a slightly big brain approach. This is kind of a, a technique more than anything else. It's not like it's new information, but what if I came in here and I made a string of valid characters, right? Instead of doing this wonky if statement, I'm gonna create a string, which I'm calling valid, and inside of that string, I'm gonna put characters that I consider to be valid, right? In this case, ACGT, since we've already done it uppercase. If you weren't doing the uppercase technique here, you could put in ACGT like that. Okay, so here is characters that I consider valid. I'm gonna loop through my DNA string. I'm gonna pull out the current character still. But what I'm going to do is ask, is this character in this string, right? I'm gonna say if valid dot contains the current character. More importantly, I'm gonna say if valid does not contain the current character. We're gonna talk about why this is mad at me in just a moment, but here's the idea. I'm gonna say if valid, that's this, does not contain this current character, what that means is the current character is something other than ACGT, right? This contains method is going to look through valid for this character, and if it's not there, I'm gonna get a true. Now, the thing is, I'm pulling out a single character. The contains method is not overloaded, meaning it's looking, I, <laughs> there's not an overloaded version that takes in a character. There's a couple of workarounds here. One is don't use char app, use substring to get the current character. I'll show you what that looks like, right? Instead of doing this, maybe we did string ch is equal to DNA dot substring i comma i plus one. This is effectively char at, but it's returning a string. And notice that this works. Right, we'll actually go ahead and test this. We have ACGT, and we want to know is that valid? True. Okay, if I throw in some other characters, we don't know, is that one valid? False. Okay, so using substring is one way to fix this. A slightly different approach, something kind of clever, is if I, what if I take this character and add it to an empty string? Notice right away IntelliJ is happy. What's happening here? Anytime you add or concatenate anything with a string, the result is a string, right? This is going to force a string conversion effectively. So if I take this character and add it with effectively nothing, well, it's still just that single character, but now it's treated as a string. Note that order here does not matter. So that's up to you. Okay, let's test this. Right now I have a string that is not valid. And if I ask if it is, we get false. If I set it back, note that we don't have to have all characters there, right? I can have just ACT. True, that one's valid. Okay, I like this approach because consider uh, a future program where you want to check for like punctuation, for instance. Well, you can make a string that's all of the punctuation that you care about and then check to see if it's there, that sort of thing. This is the is valid method. Let's take a look at two binary, right? Whenever this method is called, we're going to assume that it is valid. That means that DNA, this parameter, is nothing but A, C, G, or T. Okay, uh, we can make it uppercase if you would like, and that's gonna be the first thing I do is I'm gonna take DNA and say it is now an uppercase version of itself. But now what I want to do is, hmm, I want to loop through, get the current character, which I know is gonna be one of these four. I want to effectively translate it into its binary version. Keep in mind, it's not actually a number, it's a strings that we're working with here. And then I want to keep tacking that on to a, a new string, kind of building it up. 
right? So what we're going to need to start out with is a string, an empty string that we're going to build onto. I'm going to create a string, which I'm calling RTN because I do plan on returning it at the end, and it starts out as nothing. It is empty. I'm ready to start looping. I'm going to use a for loop. We'll loop through DNA. And with each iteration, there's really no way around this. I'm going to have to use an if statement and ask if, well, let's go ahead and pull out the current character. If the current character, that is CH, is an A. Notice that I am comparing character to character using an equals relational operator. Right? These are primitive data types. Primitive data types can be compared using our relational operator. There's six of them. If the current character is an A, what I want to do is add to my return string 0, 0. So I'll take RTN, and I'm going to say RTN is what it was plus 0, 0. Notice IntelliJ is not super happy about this. We can actually condense this down. We actually know a shorthand assignment operator. This is the same thing as saying RTN plus equals 0, 0. And I'm going to leave this over here as a comment. So I'm going to check the current character. If it's an A, I'm going to add 0, 0 to my return string. Else if the current character is a C, well, I'm going to add 0, 1. Notice I'm using else if here, and I'm going to keep going and explain why we're using else if as opposed to just independent if statements. I'm going to end the last one with a just an else because we know that it is a valid string. And so if it's not A, C, or G, it has to be T. Okay. An alternative to this structure, this uh, logic tree, is using independent if statements. The reason that this is better is because of how this evaluates. The moment that one of these is true, we don't even check the others. Right? If I take a look at this character and it's an A, we're going to do this, and because this is an else ifs, we don't even check these. The iteration ends and we move on. That's efficient. If I was to just use if statements, and actually I'm even going to plug in this other one here for to demonstrate what I'm talking about, right? If I was to use independent if statements, they are going to all be checked. Let's say I get to this first character and it's an A. Well, if it's an A, there's no way that exact same character could be any of these other characters. But my if statements are independent, and so they will check it. I would say, is this first character an A? Yeah, okay, we add this. I would then ask, is it a C? No, it's an A. Is it a G? No, it's an A. Is it a T? No, it's an A. So this is an efficiency thing. Note the independent if statements, they would work, right? You would get a correct solution but it's not as efficient. So here's our logic. We take in our string. We immediately make it uppercase so we don't have to worry about case sensitivity. I'm going to create a return string that is empty. We're going to add to it as we go. We're looping through DNA. I'm going to pull out the current character. If the current character is an A, well, I'm going to add 0, 0 to my return string. Notice that I have this in quotes, right? Double quotes because we're talking about adding a string to another string. We check for all of our characters. We do that for the whole string. After the loop is over, I have gone through the entirety of our DNA string. I want to return whatever is in RTN here at the bottom. Let's try it out. <coughs> I'm going to go back up to my main method. I'm going to plug in an SOP and we're going to take our current DNA Right? And we're going to actually call, uh, what is this, two binary? Passing in DNA. Right? This should produce the string. It's going to return it. 
I'm gonna call the two binary method passing in ACT. That's gonna come down here, compile this uh, return string, spit it back out, which then gets printed up here in our main method. Let's run it. Okay, ACT is gonna be zero, zero for the A, zero, one for the T, and one, one, I'm sorry, for the C, and then one, one for the T, right? Let's do maybe another combination of these things. Right, one, one for the T, zero, zero for the A, one, zero for the G, one, one for the T, and then zero, one for the C. And I'm not even gonna test it with an invalid um, string because it, it assumes it's supposed to be valid. So we don't have to worry about that. This has been DNA.